Hi, welcome to the National Credit Choice Online News. And today we have uh, Benanti Winery from Italy, uh, who's going to share with us uh, more about their passion and also uh, how it came about. Uh, Mr. Antonio uh, Benanti, yes. uh, welcome to our show. Uh, please tell us more about your family business, how it came about, and what's the meaning behind Benanti. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for uh, this interview. I'm very glad to be here. Benanti is actually our last name. Uh, it's our family name, and it's a family name that is originally for, from northern Italy, but it, uh, a branch of the family moved to Sicily uh, several years ago, in 1734. And that's when the Benanti family moved to Sicily. So our winery is from Sicily. Specifically, it is from the Mount Etna in Sicily. Mount Etna is the largest active volcano in, in Europe. So it's a very unique place to grow vines and to produce wine. My father uh, is passionate about wines. Uh, the family has had the passion now for about four generations. And it was 25 years ago in 1988 when my father converted this passion into a proper winery. Wine production on Etna dates back centuries. It's the oldest wine production area in Sicily. But the quality and professional winemaking only dates back to about 25 years ago. We are among the pioneers of quality winemaking on Etna. Now, moving forward, uh, what's the present uh, wine tasting notes uh, for Bedetti, you know, and especially the year 2011-2012? Uh, uh, are there any uh, releases? Um, we have a offer of a number of wines. Uh, the, common, the common feature of all the wines uh, is the finesse and the elegance and the minerality of these wines that is provided by the terroir in which these wines, well, where the vineyards are located. Etna is very different compared to the rest of Sicily and we tend to uh, always emphasize this difference. Etna is in Sicily, but it's like an island within the island. You have a volcanic soil and you have high altitudes, even up to a thousand meters. So this has an influence on the wines that are very unlike other southern Italian wines. So you will find in our latest releases, as well as in our portfolio in general, the finesse, the minerality and the sapidity of these wines. These are the common features of both red and white. And the longevity of both the white variety, Carricante, and the red varieties, Nerello Cappuccio and Nerello Mascalese, again, is very unique. So it's not uncommon to drink uh, these wines after a very, very long time. So they evolve very well throughout the years. We never release young wines. They are at least two years after the harvest, but then you can keep them and they will improve with, after a very, very long time. And how long is the long time that uh, you express? Well, because we have now, uh, the winery has been existing now for 25 years, so we have a track record, we have an experience now of uh, about 24 harvests. And we have r lately opened a 1999 Pietra Marina, which is our top end uh, white Carricante and there was an audience of 40 people including journalists and 1999 a 14 year old white was the favorite one so we can safely assume and confidently state that 15 years at least is definitely safe for our whites and even more for the reds we have some mid 90s uh, reds that we still open for our tastings well, for some vertical tastings. So again, 20 years, 20 years for the reds and up to 15 years for the whites uh, is uh, definitely already been proven as uh, a fact. Uh, speaking about maturity, how can our audiences uh, for first timers uh, who's going to explore your winery, especially if they come to Italy, uh, what will be well the, the one or two wines they should uh, uh, try uh, or recommend? I can definitely think of two of our top wines. For the white one, Carricante, there is a label called Pietra Marina. Pietra Marina is the white wine that has brought the awards to Etna winemaking. 
So currently we have released the 2009 um, vintage, which was given today the award of Tre Bicchieri by Gambero Rosso, which is a very important Italian authority. Uh, and for the reds, our most representative label is Serra della Contessa, because it comes from a vineyard in the southeast slope of Etna that is actually grown on a slope of an extinct crater. And part of the vineyard is over a hundred years old, because it's a prephyloxer vineyard. So Serra della Contessa and Pietra Marina are the two wines that mostly represent Benant. What's the philosophy of uh, Benanti's uh, uh, making good wine, the art of making good wine? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, it's very easy. When my father started, uh, when he converted the passion into a winery, he found no benchmarks in the area because, again, Etna wine production has been, is very old. It's the oldest area for wine production in Sicily, but quality winemaking is fairly recent. So he actually asked for the consulting of uh, professors of enology from Piemonte and Bourgogne uh, in France because he wanted to set a new standard, a new excellent standard on Etna. Our wines on Etna are regarded as very traditional wines. They're slow wines, we never release them young, even the entry-level wines are at least two years old. So slow wines are definitely a feature of ours. And we believe in the persistency of the wine, and we believe in truly reflecting the intrinsic features of the varieties. We do not alter the, the varieties in any way. So we are a true expression of Etna. Uh, our wines are not necessarily those that you immediately pick off a shelf. It's a boutique winery of 110,000 bottles, so it's for the discerning and very competent wine enthusiast. So it's not a wine for the mass, it's a wine for the hotels, restaurants and wine shops. You don't find it uh, in other, other channels. So high standard, boutique, persistent, highly uh, recognizable Etna wines. Now moving forward, our viewers would like to know, uh, Mr. Antonio Benatti, you know, what drives you to carry on uh, the name of your family in this wine business? You know, you, uh, what, uh, what is, why the passion of wine for your, for, for your family? Um, I have done, I have been doing other jobs as well in the past. Uh, I had the opportunity to travel to other countries. I have actually spent 15 years outside Sicily, in England, in Switzerland, in France, Spain, Mexico. At some stage, I was drawn back to my homeland because of two things, the passion for the winemaking and the pride of exporting uh, our territory to the world. So it is also, an, shall we say, an industry which is populated by people who are passionate. Journalists are passionate, wine producers are passionate, consumers are passionate, importers, restaurant owners. So it's very rewarding uh, socially. So it's not just a job, it's a way of life. And uh, I think it's the best, the best job that uh, one could do. My view is we don't see it as a job, it's a way of life. And speaking as a Sicilian, uh, the way of life, uh, my viewers like to know, Mr. Pedanti, uh, would, there, would, would there be a production which you will be producing your, your wine, your own favorite wine, named after you? Uh, would there be a possibility? You mean to have a new release? Uh, uh, yes. A new label? That, yeah, a new label that's named after you. Would that, is that a possibility? Uh, I have a twin brother, Salvino, who, is also, who also works with me and my father uh, in the winery. So. It would be unfair <laughs> to have one label just with, uh, named after me. So we will probably think of a new label in the future. They will be named after myself and my brother, because we're very close. So yes, it's not unlikely. Uh, we only work with three varieties, Carricante, Nerello Mascalese and Cappuccio. So there is only uh, so much uh, creativity that you can, uh, new creativity that you can add. So it's not currently on the agenda but it's not unlikely. If we do uh, release a wine after, you know, give, named after myself and my brother, uh, we will make sure that uh, you will know it immediately and Singapore will be 
immediately uh, one of the main markets for it. Now, folks, please do take note you can actually uh, get your wines uh, at the Hilton Singapore. And also, uh, Mr. Benati, please tell us uh, where can our viewers visit your website as well as uh, is there a distributor here in Singapore and elsewhere? We have started a collaboration with an uh, importer called Angra, Angra Wine and Spirits. Uh, they are also importing other important boutique wineries from Italy. We also have a website uh, called vinicola, vinicolabenanti.it. We have a Facebook page, Benanti Winery, or you can visit us uh, on Etna in an area called Via Grande. We have a very, um, very um, established incoming activity, and we receive wine lovers every day, mostly in the warmer months. But you can come every day; we'll be very happy to, to have you there. Now, my viewers would like to ask you this one last question: That is, uh, Mr. Benanti, would you recommend one restaurant in Italy, especially Sicily? Uh, 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 where your town is, you know, uh, one a restaurant that they can go to to pair with your wines. Uh, in our area, uh, there is a very famous uh, touristic location, high-end touristic location called Taormina, which is in the Catanian Etna area. There is one restaurant there called La Capinera. They have one Michelin star, and the chef uh, Piero D'Agostino is really a big fan of our wines. But I can also recommend a small upcoming uh, new restaurant uh, called Osteria Rosso di Vino. Uh, it's run by two girls from Taormina. They are very fond of what they are doing. And so if you go to Taormina, you should try these two places. There are many others like Turis Iligato, uh, Osteria Nero Davola and a few a few good places. Uh, so these three are those that I would recommend. Well, once again, uh, thank you, Mr. Benati, for joining us here at the National Goods Choice. And folks, thank you for joining me. I'm Robin Steinberg. Have a good week ahead and have a wonderful Christmas and a new year here in Southeast Asia and even in New York. Goodbye. Thank you.